Hey there everyone and welcome back for 2018. Michael Beresford's my name from OpenCorp and it's great to be joining you for our first market update for the new year. Hope everyone had a great break and is coming back enthusiastic, ready to make the most of 2018 and to, uh, and to really grow that wealth and create that financial stability and freedom that we're all after. We'll start the update today with a quick snapshot on where we saw 2017 end up. So 2017 no doubt was stronger than forecast with respect to uh, the performance of the property market. But as most of you will know by now that have been following us for some time, there's not one individual Australian property market. There are markets within markets, and uh, that was definitely the case throughout 2017. Uh, Sydney, again, was particularly strong coming towards the end of their five-year growth curve, um, where over the last five years, they've been up, the Sydney median house price has been up 75%. Okay, the, uh, the Melbourne uh, median house price over the last five years is up 59%. So bear in mind that Melbourne started that growth curve about 18 to 24 months after Sydney did. So we still feel it's got a little bit of room to move. It'll be interesting to see where Melbourne ends up once the growth curve has finished. Um, if we look specifically at, uh, at 2017, Melbourne was the standout with 12% capital growth in the, uh, in the median house price. Uh, Sydney was next at 10%, Brisbane at 3% year-on-year growth, and Perth slightly negative at minus 2%. Okay. Um, a couple of key uh, statistics related to relevant points that we need to keep front of mind as motivated and smart investors. Uh, if you've been reading the media, you will have heard that the Melbourne performance is really on the back of the population growth, and Melbourne has, has set itself apart from the other capital cities as far as population growth is concerned. So Melbourne's population growth, uh, or I should say Victoria's population growth, was up 2.4% last year. Now that might just be a number to you. To put that into some context, nationally, population growth is tracking at around 1.6%. Okay, so a good 60% ahead of the, uh, the national average in terms of population growth. Okay, um, if we go back to a national figure, um, obviously population growth is tracking consistently at, at high levels and has been over the last several years. Um, but specifically net overseas migration accounted for 60% of the population growth in Australia last year. And that number was just under 232,000 people that Australia's population grew by as a result of this net overseas migration. Okay, so we'll get to action steps a little bit later, but just Bear in mind, that's a lot of people that need to live somewhere. So from a demand perspective for residential housing, it definitely ticks that box in terms of the Australian property market continuing to be strong throughout 2018 and beyond, albeit mainly in different areas to what we've seen in the last five years. Um, so what does that mean for 2018 looking forward? Um, well, definitely there are going to be two key trends that we think will, uh, will come to fruition throughout 2018. Uh, the first is that we'll see an increase in the number of homeowners um, or owner occupiers that are doing renovation projects whereby they would have probably uh, sold and then bought and upgraded in the past. Reason for that is especially with the price growth in Sydney and Melbourne, stamp duty is now becoming a significant cost you know, and to, uh, to sell um, and buy a million dollar property in Melbourne, for example, at the moment, you know, the stamp duty is around $55,000. Think about the kind of improvements that you could make to your existing property for that money, um, and then add on the agent's fees and selling costs as well, you know, and pretty close, you've, you've got close to $100,000 there of improvements that you can make by staying in your own home. So um, the initial indicators around finance applications and approvals for renovation projects would definitely suggest that that trend is, um, is tracking on target at this point, early in the year, but that's something to look out for. I think in 2018, we'll also see a bit of a resurrection of the first home buyers. So um, it's been no secret that the uh, investor lending um, uh, area has tightened up. Um, you know, APRA have had um, some, some greater restrictions uh, they've placed on the banks, and that's made a restriction in investment lending, which really means that the uh, investor activity will probably uh, decrease slightly, and that slack will be taken up by increased 
first home buyer activity as well. One thing that's really important to note is that um, when we look historically over the last 10 years or so, um, there are definite spikes in first home buyer activity where the first home buying grant is in place. So we've seen that again in, uh, in Sydney and in Melbourne uh, in the last 12 months and, uh, and previous spikes going back 10 and 15 years ago when those, uh, when those um, uh, grants were in place and even incentives were offered with higher than usual grants, there's, there's a definite spike in first home uh, buyer activity. So um, probably not rocket science given that uh, first home buyers probably have reasonably strong wages to be able to cover repayments on their first home given that interest rates are low. But the big barrier to entry for them is really the deposit factor and where they get some assistance from the government, where those grants are concerned, then it just helps them get that leg up into the market. So, in terms of where we see the four main capital cities moving into 2018, uh, look, it's about two and a half months since we did our last update. Not a lot has changed. So a quick recap, Sydney, um, if not at the top, very close to the top of the market, we'd be steering clear of Sydney right now. Melbourne, still limited opportunities, depending on your portfolio and the circumstances. Uh, a lot of Melbourne has seen the major growth curve exist. We still think there are limited opportunities within the Melbourne marketplace, should you not have exposure to the Melbourne market at this point in time. We think Brisbane will be the standout. Uh, that's purely based on the fact that at no time in history, in percentage terms, has the difference between Sydney's median house price and Brisbane's median house price been as great as what it is today. Couple that with the fact that job growth is particularly strong in Brisbane over the last 12 months, and that net interstate migration, which is another key indicator we look at, is up 80% or thereabouts in the last 12 months as well. So the way I explain it to my mates, very simply is to say, imagine that someone in Sydney and to a lesser extent Melbourne can sell their own residence let's say in Sydney for 1.1 to $1.2 million, by the equivalent in Brisbane for around 600 to 650 based on the relative affordability and pocket four to 500 grand just by making that move. Now, they're likely to do that on one proviso and that's that they've got a job to move to. So that's why that job data is so important. Okay, so hence why we see that relative affordability of Brisbane, um, it needs to move at some point. It's got a lot of catching up to do and that affordability and job growth will be the real stimulus for a strong Brisbane market into the uh, short to medium future. Uh, and finally, Perth. We talked about Perth last time. Um, Perth has opportunities, albeit um, it's definitely at or, or, or towards the bottom of the market. We're seeing several large investment projects that have been in the pipeline in Perth being considered. They've been on hold for some time. Those projects are starting to come through to fruition. So given that those projects will typically take about 18 months to deliver to market, we think that uh, you know, there's a definite opportunity in Perth to make some money on the build price. And what I mean by that is that because Perth is a relatively small market, builders have been working on smaller margins through the downturn to be able to uh, keep, uh, keep themselves in business, basically. So as that increase picks up, um, demand for tradies and so forth uh, will increase, uh, their costs will go up and that will be passed on to buyers of course through the bill price. So while there might not be uh, sufficient uh, or significant capital growth over the next 18 months or so in Perth, there is an opportunity for some instant equity play on the, uh, on the build side as well. If you want any more detail on, on that, that's a quick recap. Um, the detail is in the uh, October 2017 market update. Uh, I'd encourage you to check that out. There's about 10 minutes of full detail on those four key markets. So, what are a couple of fundamentals that we can keep front of mind moving into 2018? Well, the first is the ripple effect. And what I mean by that is consistently in the media, we hear about how the Sydney market is X or the Melbourne market is Y. Now, there's not a single market within that capital city market either, okay? And the ripple effect it really relates to that phenomenon of how price growth and activity um, works within a capital city market. So if we're thinking about the Melbourne market, back in 2015 when the growth curve really started to occur, then what we saw was that the inner city or the blue chip areas were the first to see price growth. 
And the reason for that was because they were most affordable at that point in time, given that the Melbourne market had its previous growth cycle uh, between 1999 and 2003. Okay. Now, as that inner city um, and, and you know, within a 5k radius, let's say, of the, of the CBD um, got too expensive, then buyers started to move to the next suburb out and so on and so forth. So we start to get a ripple effect, like when you drop a stone in the water and the ripples spread out, we start to see growth happening, starting close to the city and then moving away from the city. So when we say that there are still limited opportunities available in Melbourne, doesn't mean that it's on the outskirts of the city, far from it, but what we are looking at is that you wouldn't be looking at buying blue chip property if the, um, uh, if the capital growth was the main motivation of that investment. Clearly it's not open corp strategy, but um, regardless of the strategy, that's why um, the middle ring growth curve areas really provide the, um, the potential given that ripple effect. Okay? The second is that we're going to start hearing about, um, if you haven't heard about it already, the fact that median house prices are dropping across, especially Sydney, and, and no doubt will happen across other areas uh, you know, throughout, the, uh, throughout the year ahead. What does that mean? Well, the media love that kind of thing because median house price is dropping, your natural tendency is to think that your house has lost value. Let's take 10 seconds to recap what a median house price is and what it means. A median house price is the middle value when you line up all of the sales in a particular area from the cheapest to the most expensive. Okay. So when a median house price drops, it doesn't mean that every house has lost value. What it does mean is that there's just more buying activity and more sales below the median than above the median because the middle will then shift this way. Okay, so number one point to consider. Um, personal case in point, one of my properties through the GFC went up by about 80 to 100 grand, but the median house price across Melbourne dropped by 8%. Okay, so it's really important to, uh, to bear that in mind. Um, a decrease in the median house price does not mean necessarily that you're losing money or that your asset value is dropping. Really, uh, really important one to keep in mind. So to summarize guys, what does that mean? There are always opportunities to be had in property markets around Australia. They may not be where the main opportunities have been in the last five years or so, but opportunities definitely exist. And as we saw, 2017 was a, uh, was a very, very strong year for property in Australia. That population growth really feeds the foundation for ongoing uh, demand for residential housing. Please take advantage of it. And the one thing I would encourage you to do if you've been thinking about investing but haven't yet dipped your toe in the water, it's just time in the market. Okay, Taking action is the only way to make money through property. Uh, wishing you all the best for 2018 and looking forward to bringing you many more updates throughout the year and many more educational videos through our WOD series. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.